Derek here at Castaway Studios. As promised, I'm going to talk about NDI 5 and primarily the Audio Direct section of that. Okay, I've been looking all over for information on how to how to set it up, how to do it, how to deal with it, and I'm finding that all of my my usual uh, go to guys have got so much to deal with with NDI five because there's so much more with NDI uh, remote and NDI bridge and and some so much awesome stuff. But as an audio guy, as a podcast producer, I really am excited by the the audio direct part of it because I've been looking into, I've been thoroughly enjoying the videos running, like this video running through uh, NDI and the videos in all through my all my studios all go into NDI so you can pick them up anywhere. It's very exciting, very, very exciting indeed. Uh, and I am was really putting off the idea of getting into Dante and running all my audio multitracks into the network like that as well. Uh, but there's one thing I do like and that is in each in each studio being independent with a mixer. In this studio, I've got a, a Zoom Live Track L8. In Studio One, there's a Zoom Live Track L12, and there's a Rodecaster Pro that knocks around wherever it needs to be for its purpose. Um, and all of those independently create a sort of a bubble with proper cables and everything, and you can you can physically control things live. And I still like that hands-on approach. But my dream is to be able to send things out from there once they've been on board. Each of these mixes I've mentioned that I've got here have onboard recording. So there's that critical redundancy that I really, really, really rely on to, to comfortably go through my daily processes, knowing that it's also being recorded on board, unaffected by all kinds of things that can go wrong around the traps, right? So my dream is to have an outgoing NDI after it's been into my mixing desk and it looks like NDI New Tech have pulled it off. So let's have a try. All we can do is try and see what happens. So I here's something I prepared earlier, right? There is a picture of Studio One. So that's not where I'm sitting right now. Where I'm sitting right now is available <laughs> is available here. Seamless switching. Seamless. Right, so this is me. Hi, hi, hi. Right? So this is my current studio, and I'll give you a little look. That's where the talent sits. Uh, there's the, the there's my camera and you know, all sorts of things like that, right? So don't worry about that for now. Uh, that is where I'm sitting now. But the idea is that studio got into a I went into a zoom glitch there in my brain. So so studio one, because it's locked down and I'm here by myself without any helpers. Uh, to sitting there and uh, talk crap for a while. I've put a radio in there. You can see the uh, the little radio I've got sitting there, and that is currently churning out some kind of FM, ABC, uh, FM or AM news channel, right? So that's churning that out, and the microphone's on it. Microphone two, Studio One, microphone two. Okay, what a, what I've also done is I've set up um uh I've set up studio one in the control room there to also be recording in another track the the USB the sound of the computer if you like and in this case it is YouTube playing the tick tock of a clock for eight hours so that way I can sit here and muck around for hours on end and knowing that those outputs are just being churned out. AM radio never shuts up and nor does this particular clock. So let me find you that. Okay, so there it is. So this is uh, the re this is the remote uh, which I'm, I'm using the KVM uh, option in the 
um, NDI studio monitors, which is fantastic. I only just discovered it. I'm absolutely over the moon. It's another feature that I would have begged for and probably have without knowing it exists. It's been around for a while, and I, but I've just discovered it. And it is a game changer for me because I've got, for the very same reason as I mentioned, I wanted the individual NDI audio tracks to come out. It also allows me to jump in and control what's happening in that studio when people are recording in there. So pretty bloody awesome, if you ask me. There it is. There's the, there's what uh, YouTube is currently running. It's been going already for an hour and a half <laughs> while I've been mucking around, okay? But the main player here is Reaper. So there's Reaper, and you can see the bouncing audio there is not related to what I'm doing in here. It is what's happening in there. We're not listening to it yet, but our goal is to be able to. So there it is. So the top track is the radio going into microphone number two. And the bottom track is the stereo computer input through USB of nine and ten. If you look at it, you'll see it's a very regular low pulse. So that's that's our starting point. Now, we want to send an NDI audio signal from each of those tracks independently. Let's see what we can come up with. Ready? Let's go. What I've done, I'm going to pull back and do it again slowly. So over here, what I've done is I've clicked on Show Track Input FX Window. So the Track Input FX Window. And I'm going to go NDI Output. I've chosen that from my... I've already, it's all come up automatically because I was playing with it. But here it is under Developers New Tech. You can search it, but it's just a VST3 plugin. So I click on that, and there's the Output Control. And... The name is what I choose. So what I'm going to choose is uh, Studio One Radio. Studio One Radio. How does that sound? I'm going to put an XX and I'll explain why I'm doing that in a minute. I haven't quite worked out this channel number business yet, but I'm going to choose channel, mono, no, it's it's mono. Even though it's the radio, I'm re it's really just one microphone. So let's call it mono channel one, and I'm going to close that. So here's hoping that we are actually sending out now from that studio, which is on my network, but it's not where I am right now, from that studio, here's hoping we're currently sending out an NDI audio signal. We'll find out soon. I'm getting some weird stuff happening with the um, the frame rate and Reaper uh, playing there. Perhaps I just stop it playing. We don't need it. So let's do the same with the other channel. Once again, it's just come up automatically, but it might not. So you might be in here, all plugins. Uh, you might go down to, I like to go down to developers and find new tech, NDI output, like that. And I'll call that one Studio One Clock XX. Okay, I'll explain why I'm putting XX. It's because I've been mucking around for so long, I might get confused later on as to, it's like that final, final, final uh, naming protocol you might do with your, with your recordings. Uh, probably shouldn't. So stereo, let's call it three and four. Like I said, I'm not quite sure exactly what that means. So with a bit of luck, with a bit of luck, we should be able to record in there. I've zoomed in so I can't find the record button right now, but for now... We don't need to, but I'm hoping I can then record, which I can, I can record in that studio. Um, if I can't get into that studio for COVID reasons or whatever, or once 
NDI bridge is sorted out. I'm actually not even here. I can start this recording on there, but what I can't do is set my redundancy recording on the mixing desk. So let's say I record there and I also want to record here, wherever I am. Okay, so let's let's hope and assume and hope, right, both very closely related, that that is now sending an NDI signal for each of those, two NDI signals that we can grab somewhere else. So let's have a look at my local Reaper. This is it. So that's just that's just a template that comes up. So I'm going to kill all those tracks. I'm going to add insert a new track. May as well insert two new tracks. Okay, so here's where it's going to get fun. First thing I'll do is go to well, there's a bunch of look, there's a bunch of effects already there, but what I'm going to do is go to NDI input source studio PC one. And look at that. We can see that is recognizing some NDI audio out there. Um, there's the there's the monitors. Uh, from the other studio, but there's the Radio XX. That was just a quick way of reminding us. And I can hear it. Which I haven't quite worked out why I can hear it right now, but I can hear it in my left ear. If I click stereo, it's coming into both my ears. So there you go. I can hear it. And there it is on the bouncing things. I will do the same for the other track. Add effect, input, and clock. And there it is, tick tock. See if you can hear it. The best way to actually do that is to demonstrate it. It's to actually demonstrate it, not just to come into a chamber and after demonstrate it. Looks like it's Parliament. It sounds like it's Parliament. And it's not George Clinton Parliament that we'd rather hear, but there you go, Australian Parliament. So, all right, so what's next? What do we want to do? We want to record it. If I arm that for recording, what's happening here? The master track from my mixer, which is appears to be also bringing in the sound from the from next door, is actually mixing it back in because it says master left. Okay, so I don't want that. So I'm going to right click on that, and instead of record input, I'm going to record out. I'm going to record output stereo. I'm going to do the same on that track. And I'm hoping that the only thing that's happening, yes, the only thing that's happening here is what's coming in from the other thing. Let's press record and see what happens. Bingo. It's working. Okay, so... Uh, you want to hear it? Epidemic of veteran suicide in recent times. The loud calls from the Royal Commission from veterans and their families. The Prime Minister consistently and stubbornly refused to act. There's proof, right? You, the last thing you want to hear is bloody our Parliament banging on. All right, so let's um, stop recording. What I what I don't want to do is I don't want to hear these guys anymore and I'm still yet to work out why I'm getting them directly in maybe I've got no monitor inputs not on monitor none of the monitors are on could be just oh 
I'll get to the bottom of this one and I'll get back to you. All right, so what I'm going to do is just turn that off. I thought it would have I thought we would have stopped hearing it since I turned those off. There you go. As, as long as Reaper is open, this is amazing. So I'm going to put that back on and just turn the effects off and we're free. So it looks like those, it looks like that plugin brings them in and sends them on without any, without really any choice. But more information coming, I promise you that much. Okay, so I'm calling it a success. Have a look again. You might want to watch this a few times. I've been I've been finding the tiny little bits here and there that I've found on this topic and watching them over and over again, just the 10 seconds people have put into it. So uh, it, it does work and I'm sure that it's going to be seamless very, very soon. And I'll f I'm going to find out what's happening with the, the monitors, why it's, why it's sending it through to me all the time and I'll get back to you. Excellent. Well, I'm stoked. It's an absolute, I'm not going to overuse the over, already overused word game changer, but it is something that I've dreamt of, of, of happening. And I know there's more and I know that somewhere in there you can actually just send all the channels in one NDI stream and pick them up at the other end. But for now, I'm uh, not sure how. So I look forward to finding out how and getting back to you and, and sharing it with you. All right. Thanks, everyone. Uh, rock on. Stay safe. Hopefully there'll be some people in my studio sometime soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>